dive into the Palom. Hello, welcome back to Mad Mark, and let's dive into the Paloma attacks in Jammu and Kashmir. We have three options right away. We can listen to the biased India media and blame it on Pakistan and uh, JHE Mohammed, whatever. We can say it was just an attack by Kashmirians against Indian Army, you know. Or three, we can say it was an inside attack by India. I am absolutely not a conspiracy theorist at all. But I have to go with the last option. I truly do believe it was an inside job by India. And I'll explain why I feel this way. <clears throat> First off, right when the attack happened, you could see Modi waited three and a half. According to the opposition party to Modi, they said he waited three and a half hours. The first three and a half hours after the attack, he was taking pictures. He was doing some kind of movie, video type thing where he's just promoting himself. He didn't even talk about it. That's awful fishy. And then if you look at Pakistanis, uh, Imran Khan, you can see right in their eyes that it's just like, wow, I wasn't expecting this, you know. They were shocked looking. You look at India, you look at Modi, you look at some of his generals. These had a look on their face like they weren't surprised. They were all casual. They obviously knew in advance. They had a warning in advance. But here's why I believe it was an inside attack. 350 kilograms of explosives inside such a secure little area. I mean, can you even comprehend that? I did a bunch of research here and was looking at the largest attacks in America ever. And traditional bomb, the biggest one I could come up with was 1920s Wall Street bombing. That was 45 kilograms worth of explosives. This was 350 kilograms. Over seven times larger traditional explosives that have ever been used in a terror attack in America history. Let that sink in. How the hell did they get 350 pounds kilograms of explosives in Jimmy and Kashmir? How did they do it? How did they load it into that Scorpio vehicle? How did they line it up to explode with the electronics? And Pakistan did the right thing. They said, prove it. Prove it's us. So the first thing India did right away is the attack happened and they're like, okay, India did it. We know all the facts. We got everything, this and this and this. And they just thought everyone would just jump on their side and believe it. The only one that really did was France right away. And because Macron's a piece of shit and he's trying to kiss anyone's ass that he can to get drum up support. So, and we can ignore them. I mean, I hope that country fails. I, I hate France, so, and I hate Macron, <clears throat> and I think Pakistan must remember the way France jumped sides on this. But let's get down to the details, why it was an inside attack. First off, I said three and a half hours he waited. Nothing. What was he doing in that three and a half hours? Well, he probably had raw intelligence and military intelligence, sort out all the facts, how, how the things unfolded so they can get their transcript transcript, you know, all written all professional for probably raw, you know and say, okay, this is what happened this is how it unfolded, this is what you could tell the media this is what you not tell the media because if he went out right away when he found that attack and gave details if he slipped up and said something that he wasn't supposed to know, like stuff that he wasn't supposed to know already <laughs> Then they would know it's an inside attack. So he gave a grace period, maybe a three and a half to four hour grace period to get all the facts up and then read it. Second off, this is the thing that really pisses me off. He said he killed all the people in that area that were associated with the tax. Why in the hell would you do that for? That is the absolutely dumbest thing I've heard in my life. 
If you have the mastermind of the attack, you take that person by alive. They get information. That is your link. If Pakistan did it, that is your link back to Pakistan. Okay? You killed your evidence. What evidence you got now? What you said you got inconclusive evidence. Where is it? They're demanding it. First thing I would ask, Indian Army, you have these, why did you kill these terrorists for? Obviously, you take them alive. You know? I mean, if the CIA hired me to find some mastermind attack of some big attack in the United States, I'm going to get that guy alive. If I, if I kill the guy, I, I'm going to resign from my position. I'm going to say, I failed, you know, or I'm going to give it a, a reason. I'm going to say, the dude was strapped up with C4 and he was going to die anyways, you know, or the guy committed suicide. But you don't, they killed the evidence on purf purpose. And the problem with that is, ISI, what they would have did is they would have got a hold of contacts of the people they carried it out and asked them, where did you get the explosives? Who gave them to you? Who lined it up? Who told you to hit this spot at this time? They would have probably got some names. They could have probably drawn out a face sketch. And ISI, Impact Army, could probably link it back to some guy maybe working for the Indian Army. And reverse engineer how it was an inside job. Pakistan didn't want that. India did not want that. They killed all the evidence. They killed all the evidence there. Anybody associated with that attack, they killed them. Why would you do that for? Second of all, that place was as secure as hell. The, probably the most secure place in the world almost that road. They had checkpoints everywhere. So you have a Scorpio car with 350 kilograms of explosives in it? All these dog sniffing dogs, you could have one little stick of dynamite inside the tire well of a car and they'll go right over to it and sniff it and sit there. You're going to tell me they don't have that technology? They don't have a goddamn dog sniffing, bomb sniffing dog over to India at the checkpoints? It's ridiculous. You have a, a Scorpio come over, you pop open a door, a dog's there. If he just sits there, you got to search the thing. And you got n how many checkpoints? And then you kill the evidence. And then Modi doesn't, Modi doesn't respond for four hours. And when he does, he's all casual and he doesn't look surprised. And now let's go into the motive. Let's go into the motive. Why would they do it? Pakistan has nothing to gain by it. For 30 years... Pakistan has been struggling economically, okay? And now all of a sudden they got this massive investment. You got Godard down there, and uh, you got CPAC. You have uh, Saudi just invested like $20 billion. You have, you know, United Emirates investing. You have Russia invested like $10 billion into the gas infrastructure. So all these infrastructure advancements. And India didn't like it. They did not like it. They want to destabilize Pakistan. And I believe they figured they had to pull this off. They did an inside job. And the whole goal of the attack was uh, to isolate Pakistan, both diplomatically and financially. That was their goal. So they did the inside job. And they just thought they were going to do the same thing they've always done in the past, like they did with the 1999 war. Or Pakistan's a terrorist nation, and we condemn terrorists, and everyone has to be against them. It didn't work. So this attack was a success for Pakistan. Because the world is not believing them. And they tried to sanction a couple uh, people in the Olympics for it from Pakistan. And the Olympic Committee said, you don't have the evidence. They didn't buy it either. So this whole attack is backfired on India. And I, I think the attack is going to backfire in a way that it's going to get Modi out of office. Because um, it seems like the opposition party, the Congress party over there, they hate it. And there's nothing more they want to know than it is an inside job. If they figure it's an inside job and Modi had something to do with it, 
and you have enough public opinion in India thinking that, he's done. He's absolutely done. So uh, that's the big thing. I, I think you just got to drill. It is an inside job. You had probable costs up. They had everything to gain from it, India. Pakistan had nothing to gain from the attack. You look at how, the amount of explosives that were brought in there that weren't detected, that sat there for how long. India killed all the evidence or anyone associated with it to be questioned, which is absolutely ludicrous. You, know, you think the CIA, you think we do that when we find terrorists? No, we bring them to Guantanamo Bay and waterboard them. We get any intel out of them possible. And I mean, in Pakistan, if we wanted to get someone that had a lot of info, you'd send your SSG, your special forces in there, and you'd give them incentive. Hey, we'll give you like 50,000 US dollars per person if you get this guy alive. They'll find a way to get the guy alive. So it's an inside job. And if anyone wants to debate me from India, whatever, I will debate you. I say it's an inside job. Prove me wrong. And we have a saying in America, you're uh, innocent and prove, until proven guilty. Well, how about you, India? Pakistan said, we're innocent until proven guilty. And you're trying to be a dictator on this? This is ludicrous. And I, all I can say, the great thing about it is it is the world does not believe India anymore. They know them as liars, and uh, they know what they're up to, and their games are done. And furthermore, that game you tried to play with Saudi, after they invested $100 billion in you, trying to cause problems and stick them in a hard position between the two countries, that's pretty uh, disrespectful to Saudi. And furthermore, uh, I don't think the United States is really happy about it either, because... Pakistan could be a potential good ally in the war on terror in the future with Iran. So you better watch your ass, India, because you start getting Saudi mad at you, you start getting the United States mad at you, and you will be cut off and you'll be the ones isolated. So don't push your luck and don't fuck with the wrong people.